Yo, so I've been working at a startup called Cal.com for the past five months. And uh, over the past few months, uh, since it's my first tech job, it has been honestly one of the craziest experiences of my life. Um, I've grown so much as a developer and I've learned a lot of things along the way. And uh, I just felt like making a video just, uh, you know, talking about some lessons that I've learned, uh, some things that I noticed, because uh, I do know that uh, a lot of you watching this do want to go down the startup path and work at a startup. So, um, you know, I just felt like making this video. So uh, enough with the corny intro. Uh, let's get into it. So the first thing that I learned working at a startup, and this is one of the first lessons that I learned, was that the founders work insane amounts of hours like i'm saying like a crazy amount of hours um i've seen them clock in like 16 17 hour days where it's just non-stop work like like we have a few people in europe and the founders i always see them online even at crazy times like i'm, I'm working at like i don't know 8 p.m 9 p.m and they're over there at like 2 a.m 3 a.m and i'm like why what are you doing up so i realized that at an early time and why i'm talking about this is like a lot of us think, right, when you own a business, you can work your own hours, you can chill. And it's just not the case. They're oftentimes dealing with the most important things. You know, they hire people, but oftentimes the problems that the founders are dealing with are most of the time the most important things that other people can't solve. So, for example, maybe there's a customer that needs to talk to the founder because they only want to talk to the founders. Maybe there's a big problem or there's a lawsuit coming in that they need to solve and talk to a lawyer about. There's just a lot of stress involved. And oftentimes that leads to a crazy amount of work being done by the founders. Now, on the other hand, right, you probably think, oh, yeah, obviously the founders do work a lot. But it's one thing to think about working 16 hours or 12 hours or whatever the amount is. And it's another to actually like see it firsthand. And it really opens your eyes and makes you question whether or not the founder route is for you. Um, so just something to uh, keep in mind when joining a startup is that the founders just work a shit ton and... It's quite scary. Now, the second thing that I learned working at a startup is that collaborations and knowing other people and leveraging other people's um, reputation oftentimes matters more than like basic marketing and your product. So what I mean by this, right, is paid ads are okay. And they're oftentimes like quite effective if you can do a bunch of them and, you know, constantly just overload the people watching it with these ads. Um, but for the most part, your company just doesn't want to do that. They don't have the funds, nor do they want to do it. And so the second best option is going to other companies that are in your space or in the space you're trying to reach and collaborating with them. So a recent example of this would be uh, we were trying to dabble more into the developer market. We created this like developer uh, docs and developer tools for you to build with like something in our software. And instead of going down the paid marketing route, we thought of creative ways to reach users with well-known developer tools. So a great example would be uh, Supabase, uh, Replit, um, Dubco, what else? Oh my God, uh, Clerk, we're talking to Clerk. So talking to these companies and obviously exchanging a value like we'd have to give them value as well maybe through promoting them to our market which is obviously really good for them as well but what i'm trying to get at is who you know and uh the the things you attach yourself to do matter a lot for you to scale in different areas of your business and i just never thought of it that way i was just like i, I always thought that you know you're a business owner yeah, the better product you have, the more money you're going to make. But oftentimes that's not the case. And a really a much faster way of going about things is networking with other people. And I know networking is a weird word, but talking to other people, seeing how, how you can provide value to them. And most importantly, when it comes to companies, it's exchanging their reputation with your reputation and expanding into their fields. So in our case, we talked to Superbase and we did like this collaboration and a lot of Superbase devs who use Superbase tried out our product, right? And that was literally just a very easy way to get a ton of users in. Now you obviously do need a good piece of software, a good product. That's like, if without a product, you can't do shit. But to scale up and to really just level up how many people are using it, you need to go viral in, in very quick ways. And uh, I'm forgetting the word here, but like, Oh my God, I'm losing a train of thought. In different ways, there you go. So just in different ways that are different, 
different ways are different in ways that will help you scale up in a different way because paid ads are just not it. Now, the third thing that I learned working at a startup is asking for help whenever you want. Now, this is more like dev specific rather than uh, business specific. Uh, but earlier on in, uh, you know, when I just started out, I always had this like single founder mentality where I had to do something by myself without anyone's help. I thought that, you know, asking for help was embarrassing and would make me feel weak. And um, I was given a task. I forget what it was. It was just like, um, it was just something about a feature. And um, I was working on it and a week went by and I couldn't solve anything. Like I was still in step one. I literally couldn't build anything because I was confused. I was into the software and um, I was scared. Other week goes by. I'm still stuck on this problem. I'm still going in circles, not knowing what to do, freaking out. How am I going to build this? And then it occurred to me that I needed to ask someone for help. And so I went to one of the senior devs and I literally just asked, hey, how do you do this? Hey, can you help me out with this? And they literally told me something. They're like, hey, use this. And they gave me like the piece of code and like, a, not a piece of code, but like the idea of like, you know, what to do. And I implemented it. And literally in that hour, um, the feature was done. And that was a really big lesson to me earlier on. I was really happy that I learned it. Asking for help is not a bad thing. And if anything, it's a really good thing, especially working at startups where you're in that really quick environment where you want to, you know, do something as quick as possible and well as possible and then move on to the next. When you're constantly in your mind where you're egotistic and you're, you're worried about how other people may perceive you, you're never going to get shit done. Talking to the seniors, they've been at these companies for years. They know the ins and outs of the pieces of software that you're working with. Ask them questions. They'll literally solve it in a few seconds. I'm not even kidding you. Some of these people are geniuses. Shout out Alex. Um, he's not going to watch this video, but he's shout out there. But regardless, asking for help, don't be embarrassed. Um, it was a really big lesson for me because now I just, you know, A, you learn that how to do that thing. Like if, you, if they teach you how to do something, you're going to know that. And B, you could just... Finish it quicker and move on to the next thing, which is always good. Now, the fourth thing that I learned working at a startup is that the process of building features is much different to like a corporate and big tech environment. Now, I've never worked in big tech and I've never, you know, this is my first tech job. I've said that before, but I have worked in a corporate environment outside of tech. And one thing I do know about the corporate environment and what I hear from friends that work in big tech is that things are often spread out into multiple tasks. So when you're given, let's just say, let's say you're given like a tech job as a junior engineer, right? In a big tech environment, you're often given like five tasks and five things to manage and you have to finish the, those projects. While in a startup environment, you're more so focused on like, you're given one goal and then you're, you're one task and then you're asked to finish that task and only focus on that task and then move on to another task, which you're given once that first task is done. I butchered that, but all I'm saying is that you're given one task at a time instead of multiple tasks at a time. And if you're asking me, I personally really like this. This is why people say that startups are really intense. It's mostly because you're just so focused on one thing that you're kind of forced to finish it quickly pause. And so uh, just to give you like a real life example, um, I was asked to do a, um, a landing page for one of our features. And that's all I'm focused on. And then the next week, right, you know, this next upcoming week, I'm working on this new feature. That's like a big feature. And um, that's all I'm focused on. I'm not really given anything else other than like, you know, basic day to day tasks, like like posting on Twitter or something like that. But for the most part, if you're going to work in a startup environment, it's going to be one task at a time, finish that as quickly and efficiently as possible, then move on to the next task. And so the fifth and final thing that I learned working at a startup, and by the way, there's a lot more lessons that I've learned. So if you do like, you know, if you like this type of video, please let me know. Um, I will do more. Just please like and subscribe. It honestly really go a long way. It's free, right? So why not do it? Anyways, back to this uh, last thing that I've learned. Um, it is that great companies and great startups are always pushing the goals posts, goals posts, goal posts on the level of standard that you have at the company. And so what I mean by this, right, is um, a bad startup oftentimes is quite complacent with how things are going. Maybe it's they built a feature, they leave it as that, 
and then they don't do anything else because they build that feature and they feel like you know they've done enough as a company they they they're following the industry standard they're looking at their competitors and saying that company has done this 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 and this feature let's do the exact same and leave it at that we've done enough but what i noticed with like really awesome startups and really awesome businesses is that they're pushing the level of standard and what it means to be like the lead of that industry. So for example, at Cal, right? Not only are we trying to like build features that are like, haven't been done by other tech um, software scheduling companies, but we're also trying to be the best at the things that other people are already doing. This also goes for writing code. Um, there was a time where like, I wrote like a, a like a thing for the, a chat bot and I thought that the code was really good, but I when I asked someone to review it and they reviewed it, they came back to me and they're like, hey, you need to fix this. So then I fixed that and then I asked them to review it again and they looked at it again and they're like, hey, oh, you know, how about we do this instead? So they thought of a different way of solving the problem even though they told me to do it the first time. And um, even though I was a little bit, you know, not annoyed, that's not the word. You're just like, I did this right. You know, you're a little upset. But... Um, it made me think, right, once that feature was done, um, they're doing the best and they're trying to write the best line of code at all times for the software that we are making. And these, that, like even if it was a small feature, they still consider different ways and the best way to do things, even though it didn't matter, right? Like something as small as a chat bar, right? It doesn't really matter. You're just using some like other tool and you're installing it, but, and using like an API or something. But they thought, how can we make this as good as possible? And how can we use this in the most optimal way? And I think that mentality, and this is all across the company, um, that mentality I think is what pushes and makes startups a lot different than corporations and successful startups versus like unsuccessful startups. So yeah, pushing the goalpost, that's the final one. Um, if you did enjoy the video, please like and subscribe. I already asked, so it's twice now. So hopefully that doubles the amount. Uh, probably not. A lot of you are not subscribed. Please like and subscribe or else I'll, uh, I don't know what I'll do. Anyways, this got pretty dark. Um, I'm going to go now. I'm pretty tired. Uh, by the way, sorry for the lack of uploads. Honestly, I've just been super busy with work and, um, honestly, I kind of just fell out of love with making videos. I don't know why. Maybe it's just, I'm dealing, I don't want to say I'm dealing with anything, but like, I wasn't get anxious. What? what am I saying? I often get anxious with videos i'm always worried and uh it's not a good thing so uh, i'm trying to just make videos have fun with it and uh, hopefully learn a thing or two so uh yeah happy coding and i'll see you in the next video Bye bye